Good evening, everyone. Today we have reading session five, and our trainer for today is Mrs. Annapurna Murugan. These are a few instructions for you all. Make sure you have a stable internet connection and a noise-free environment, for which we recommend you to use your earphones for the best experience. Also, respect your instructor, your classmates, and yourself. Be respectful and professional, and do not write anything inappropriate in the chat box. These are three memberships that are available to you all at Ubergrad. You instantly become a bronze member when you get yourselves registered on the Ubergrad website. Apart from that, we have the silver and the gold members memberships with some additional features as displayed on the screen. So for getting yourselves upgraded to any of these two memberships, you can directly go on the website of Ubergrad and get yourselves registered there. Or you can send in your details in the chat box, and I'll get you into contact with the organization. So moving ahead, at Ubergrad, you also get free profile evaluation, which is done by our experts, which consists of university shortlisting, course recommendations, country recommendations, which are made according to a student's academic strength, future aspirations, career objectives, course of study, and requirements. We also have recommendations report, which is customized for the students according to their profile and requirements. And doubt clearance is also there regarding the study abroad process, which consists of shortlisting applications, scholarships, etc. So moving ahead, these are some of the live classes which goes on at Ubergrad every week. So firstly, we have free Jari live classes, which goes on from Monday to Friday. 8 30 to 9 30 it's a two-month course we also have free live duolingo classes which goes on from monday to friday 6 30 to 7 30 it's a two-week course so both of these are online classes and for getting yourselves enrolled for any of these two you can directly go on the website of ubergrad and get yourselves enrolled there so this is a webinar that's going to help uh, that's going to take place tomorrow that is on 25th of November from 7 o'clock to 8 p.m. And the title of it is How to Score 7.5 Plus in IELTS. It's a live webinar. And the speaker for um, the webinar is Mrs. Annapurna. She's a certified British Council Master Trainer, Pearson Certified Master Trainer with 17 plus years of experience and more than 10,000 students have been under her. So we'll be covering live, um, we'll be covering IELTS Academy, uh, I, sorry, IELTS Academic uh, exam pattern. Can I prepare on my own? So this question will also be covered. IELTS preparation, free resources, tips on listening, reading, and speaking, and time management hack. So all these would be covered in this webinar that's going to take place tomorrow. So do join in, guys, and register yourselves on the website of Ubergrad. So these are the achievements of some of the students who got themselves enrolled at Ubergrad. Now I'll quickly show you the website of Ubergrad, where a lot of information is there available to you all regarding the countries, universities, courses, and examinations. So. You can explore a lot of information that's there on the website and have a clear picture of whatever doubts you have. Also, we have free profile evaluation and talk to a counselor option. And test preparation stores are there, which consists of live IELTS, live GRE, live Duolingo classes. And some additional services are also there, consisting of education loans, forex cards, accommodations, international SIM, US credit card, US bank account, etc. And blogs are also uploaded on the website. So you can directly go on the website of Ubergrad, that is ubergrad.com, and make yourselves available with all these informations that are posted there. So uh, also, the recordings and the handouts of the various sessions and the various um, modules are there on the website of Ubergrad. So I'll show you the place where you can access these um, things. So just go on to ubergrad.com. That is the website. Go on to your name, my test preparation. Go on to IELTS Academy Comprehensive Live Classes course. On clicking on that particular option, it will direct you to this window. 
Now over here, for example, you want to watch the yesterday's session of reading. So yesterday, basically, we had reading session four. So directly go on the reading module. Go on to day four, since yesterday was day four for reading. After that, the first option would be of the handouts of the various uh, sessions under the module. And usually, the last option is of the current recordings. Uh, see, for example, if I go to 3.4.9, it has directed me to this particular window, which says reading day four recording, that is 23rd November, yesterday's recording. So in this, uh, by this procedure, you can access the recordings and the handouts of the other sessions and all the other modules, uh, as in listening, reading, speaking, and writing. And also the sessional tests are available here itself. Uh, like after each module, the sessional tests are also there. So you can make yourselves available with these sessional tests and practice a lot that's there on the website. Also, I'll be sharing a Telegram channel link in the chat box for you guys. So you can just join the Telegram channel of IELTS. And over there as well, a role of information is there. And mock tests are also available there. So you can practice a lot on the Telegram channel itself as well. Now, I'll quickly hand over the session to our trainer for today, uh, Mrs. Anapuna Murugan, ma'am. And the remaining questions I'll be answering in the end of the um, session. So stay tuned till the end. So, ma'am, over to you. Thank you. Good evening, ma'am. Good evening. Yeah. Hi, guys. Good evening. I hope everyone is doing good. Yes. Good evening, Himani. Good evening, all. So today we'll be working on repeating a set of questions. Good evening, Basa. Good evening, uh, everyone. OK, Namnita, Pamina, good evening. Good evening, all. OK, so now let me share the screen quickly. So let me discuss a few other questions. So that plays crucial role in our uh, this one IELTS reading part. Before going on to this, I would like to uh, tell a few things about reading. So reading, so is achievable uh, thing. That means you can get a perfect score on it. Uh, only the thing is you need to give the right approach. What you need to do, you people need to give right approach until and unless you don't give the right approach. So you can't get the scores here. Okay. Definitely it is not a rocket science. At the same time, it is not uh, uh, this one I can say. Uh, it is not a piece of cake. Okay. So here. On reading, you all know that you will be getting three passages, three passages of, uh, uh, they, they all will be of uh, uh, this one, very lengthy. They all will be very lengthy. And also, they could be from any subject. It is not just from one topic. It could be science, technology, normal, you know, uh, this one, topics, generalized issues it could be economics it could be business it could be anything it could be based on archaeological research it could be anything yeah okay so therefore we need to be ready with that and at the same time uh, it is not important for us to have any external knowledge to answer this uh, this one passages why because whatever the answers they require it's already present in reading comprehension nothing out of the box they will be asking because your questions are not based on reasoning okay your your questions are based only on the understanding of the passage hence nothing uh, inference extrapolation these type of questions will not be there okay so this is what basically i would like to say and i have worked on different questions and i have given you the different um, uh, methods, tricks, and also, like I have said, how you need to identify question idea, how you should not just go beyond the, uh, behind the keywords. So how does it not help? And you be very, very good at paraphrasing. OK, so these are some of the things that you people need to uh, know 
and you need to be aware of so that your people can get perfect score okay and yes last but not least you guys need to practice a lot okay to have hands on expertise so to maintain the time or to manage the time so and to get the accuracy so you need to practice a lot don't think that okay ma'am i practice 10 passages so i guess i'm ready to go no so you need to practice more sets, guys. Uh, guys, okay. So almost around fifty to sixty sets of passages you people practice here. Fifty to sixty sets in the sense what? Five, fifteen to four in each set. Sorry, fifteen to three in each set will have three passages, right? Like that, you people practice. I am dead sure. Even about 25, 30 also will give you that. Uh, uh, this will notice that near proximity you will be getting but lot of practice required don't get panic so don't just read the passage and then go to the questions it's always important to know the question before you uh, go and search for the answer okay so this is what we have now I'm going to share the screen and quickly let us discuss some of the other types of questions here. okay now uh let me put on to present your view hmm. now diagram labeling labeling this is also one of the question that we have here okay here also i would appreciate if you people pick up and tell the answers just like uh, yesterday because you'll also know where you people are correct why you are not correct so and what are the silly mistakes that you people will be conducting so all these will come to know if you start answering okay uh, thank you sarah right so so that I can also see your answers and I can correct at least few of them, right? So yesterday also we did, like every day regularly we are doing this, isn't it? When I feel that your answers are not apt, minutely they are uh, missing on certain things, I instruct. So I would appreciate you people to answer the questions, okay? So Priyadam, uh, you can message, you can put the message. You can text me, Priyatam. Okay. So now diagram labeling. Just get back to your school days or college days, guys. So in school days or college days, what they were doing, they were discussing. You remember you people had this diagram labeling also in schools and colleges. But how you people were doing? So we basically had one particular paragraph or two paragraph which basically described the figure isn't it so now what we were doing so we were just going into that paragraph and we were reading that complete paragraph in detail okay as we were reading in detail so we were wherever we had the question requirement we uh, we were taking it and we were uh, this one labeling the pictures there isn't it so that was a basic thing that we were doing the same thing we are going to do but here what we do first we need to identify because they won't give us anything ready-made so here as i said so 8 to 12 paragraphs will be there you will be not knowing so in which paragraph basically so this diagram will be there so to identify in which paragraph they are discussing this diagram, what you need to do? You need to do skimming process. Skimming process means what? Reading first sentence and last sentence. Okay. When you read first sentence and last sentence, what happens? You get to know the main idea of that particular paragraph then you can decide oh whether they are describing the diagram or they are describing something else so you will be able to find that okay so that is the reason what we are going to do so first we are going to identify which paragraph the diagram is described as soon as you locate that paragraph 
now you calm composed so read every sentence and match with the diagram okay so yes while doing this matching what happens you will be able to pick up or label the uh, this one what is that blanks properly so now let us try to what is that see here also know where i am going and looking at the paragraph isn't it so first what i'm doing i'm trying to look at the questions only here also what we do we we basically look at the questions so in the initial stage okay the diagram below shows how copper sulfate can be made and always my one more instruction is what whatever the instructions they give you people need to speak oh uh, what does that take it okay whatever the instructions they give so you have to what does that take it up uh you you will get the idea whether you need to in what way you need to answer and you'll also get the clue what this diagram is because when you see this diagram don't you think we are clueless we only come to know that it is an experiment but what is the experiment all about so we'll not be knowing that so what you need to do here they always give an int here so don't forget see now if you oversee these things now if you think that no ma'am by like like that only we'll be finding out so no worries we'll be finding out karke if you think na that when you give even the practice exam also you will be seeing that how you get confused how you feel trapped and over stressed okay when i am instructing okay you guys to look in for the question statement i mean that you people need to look at those instructions it's very very important because i am very much what is that concern whatever the methods we give okay that should actually save time also and that should give you accurate answers also okay but so uh, that is the reason i'm saying don't think that it is just a waste of time reading the instruction and reading the question headings always no matter if you have repeatedly done 100 practices on that type of question but still i say every time you take up any question kindly read the instructions why you get the hint also you get the instructions how they are getting how they want answers okay so this diagram is showing what how copper sulfate can be obtained from simple laboratory equipment this is the thing we basically have choose no more than three words that means we need to either have maximum up to three words or a number just a number or the three this one okay so now this is the figure so now we understood it is the copper sulfate solution let us try to see something has gone in the beaker see and also one more thing here the numbers will be jumbled guys don't think that the numbers will go in order but the numbers will be jumbled let us try to go and here we are clueless what is happening only we know reaction and concentration now let us try to see yeah it is essential when conducting this experience to wear so safety glasses so we don't have anywhere the goggles requirement in the kitchen the experiment is divided into four distinct sections the first is reaction stage yeah now i got that means this is what a first stage this is a reaction stage and this is your first stage now when a glass beaker is placed on the top of a tripod what has happened you see that the glass beaker is big uh, uh, placed on the tripod and 20 cm of sulfuric acid poured into it just see what is happening so they have kept the glass beaker and 20 cm of dilute sulfuric acid is poured here but we don't know what is the another thing that they have let us see and now 
the acid is then heated when it is almost boiling a small quantity of copper oxide powder is added to a beaker now what is the reaction here happening they are adding isn't it the aroma so what is added tell me what is added right copper sulfate powder isn't it what they are adding they are adding copper sulfate powder see we have not answered one and two but we got the instructions that this is copper sulfate this is for third one number it also the third one answer is copper sulfate powder this is not first one remember that also out of confusion also what happens we have that habit of going in sequence in answering we think that oh this is the thing we'll transfer the answer to wrong number don't do that particular thing okay tk so this part is done i'll clear this writings also so that let the question be visible we have cleared here so our this one okay now so let us see what is that okay is added to the beaker the mixture is then stirred with a glass spatula until the copper oxide has dissolved okay fine this process is then repeated until 1 g of powder has been added to the sulfuric acid the process is repeated until they add 1 g of uh, this one to that the heat is then removed from the beaker and the solution is allowed to cool the second stage is filtration stage so and as the name suggests is where a filter and conical flask are used to remove any copper oxide that has not reacted now what is this this is the second part now you can see funnel is there everything is there so this is a second stage in this second stage what is happening fill isn't it second stage is the fil filtration and uh, see the fourth one they are giving you if you see fourth one something is left in the funnel what is that why they are using funnel to why they are using the funnel to filter out that uh, copper oxide which is undissolved isn't it so therefore answer should be what so they want to remove copper oxide okay what is happening they are removing copper oxide okay next the heat is then removed from the beaker and this 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 filtration stage and is where a conical flask and this are used to remove any copper a clear copper sulfate solution will be left in the glass dish so do we have anything yeah in the glass dish what is that we have copper sulfate solution so what is that you need to write copper sulfate solution okay that is left what is left copper sulfate solution is left and the next thing that is there what the third stage is where heat is applied to the copper sulfate solution in order to concentrate the solution the concentration stage the final so what is that stage is known as concentration stage okay theek hai now the final crystallization stage the final crystallization stage happens when the solution begins to cool and pure copper sulfate crystals start to form so now what is that final stage is crystallization maybe here they are using the this one right so it is what final stage is crystallization okay and here what is that what is removed copper sulfate crystals okay you can see when the solution begins to cool the pure copper sulfate crystals start to form so here in this bowl we can see crystals are there which one copper sulfate crystals getting it understood and did you guys get how to uh, tackle this problem i repeat once again find out 
where that diagram is described in the paragraph by looking at the question instructions you get the cue so what this diagram all about then using that cue you need to enter the paragraph using skimming process and you need to identify the paragraph where they are talking about this post that what you people need to do you need to read that diagram properly and it is not like all at once you will be reading after every sentence you come and look at the picture so that what is happening so you will understand okay one by one the things will be flowing on and also here the things won't be in sequence you people could see here itself. First, we had something. Second was the last one, isn't it? So that means last second one it is. It was penultimate, uh, uh, this one answer we had got. That means here what happens, it is not always like it goes sequentially in diagram. It may get tumbled up also with the numbers. So these things you need to keep in mind here. The next thing that we have, the next type of question so that we are going to discuss is one of the important thing that is nothing but matching endings. So how many of you feel matching ending is tough? Is it everyone? Uh, both one we can uh, say remove copper oxide also. Yes, we can remove copper oxide also. That is not a problem. Yes, yeah, Sai, you can text me, Sai. What is your problem? Uh, you can tell me. Your queries, you can tell me there. Okay. Right. Now we have uh, the next type of question. And what is that next type of question? Matching heading. What we have? So we have matching heading. Heading. So I asked you guys one question. How many of you feel it as easy? And how many of you feel it as difficult? Tell me. OK, so a few have raised their hands. So whether what should I think? Whether those people who have raised their hand, is it easy for you or uh, tough for you? Tell me. Is it easy or tough? OK. So guys, you need to text because I can't ask you to speak. Only when you people text, so I, uh, you should message me. OK. Little tough. OK. I can see that. So yes. So it is little tough. TK. Guys, I will show you how easy this particular thing will be. Tough, Pratika also tough. No issues, Pratika. So you are not getting Priya. OK, little bit tough. So that's, sometimes it will be a little tough, and sometimes it is confusing also. Yes. So all these are very common issues, guys. Don't panic, because it is not just the issue with you guys. Most of the students feel the same thing. Why we feel the same thing? Because we overread. When you want to give an ending to a paragraph, so what you people will be doing? You will read the entire thing, right? You will read the entire thing. So that is what you people will be doing when you do that particular thing. So therefore, now what you need to do, you should read very less. OK? You need to know what you people, if you read, you will get the main idea. See, main idea, uh, I mean the heading. So how the heading is given, how the title is given on the basis of our, uh, this one, right? What is that I can say? Depending upon the main idea, we give the title. I would like to tell why we had a movie named as Bahubali, and why it was not named as Triple R. Is there any, uh, this one? I would say that, OK, title, let us give anything there. 
do you think that you can uh this will take it no right the theme should match the main idea should match so depending upon the main idea depending upon the things so what you people can do so we give the title it is the what is that uh, the that uh, that is one of the common thing we observe on the team we give the title so if that is the case even we need to identify the theme na theme or main idea we need to find out either the theme or main idea how do you find out this theme or main idea i had said you people one thing on the first day of the class uh that every paragraph the first sentence and last sentence gives you the main idea and conclusion so if you read the first sentence and last sentence thoroughly and if you understand them properly so what happens you will get the idea what was the argument and how did they end that argument that means you people will get an idea so of so what is happening in that particular paragraph we don't have to read this complete mid of the paragraph why in the mid of the paragraph they will be explaining they will be using some evidences to present the same idea okay so that means when they are explaining when they are using evidences they may use some of the external things also and they may start doing it using of that external explanation and that extra information to present the idea actually confuses we think that oh they are using something else maybe the topic could be something else we just wander off out of the topic hence what we need to do we need to make sure that so we need to have this what is that first sentence and last sentence that means you people need to use skimming process here now here let us apply the same thing here and let me tell you see these are the headings we have now my instruction here is what i don't want you people to look at the options first as usual for the first time here i say for this question types i want you people to get back to the paragraph first and read the first sentence and last sentence where is our first sentence this is the first sentence full stop to full stop okay but i have a disclaimer also after full stop if you have any kind of transition words okay if you have transition words and but however while and all those things that means this idea is incomplete you have to read the next sentence okay so therefore be careful about this thing otherwise full stop to full stop is our approach and last sentence is what again full stop to full stop here theek hai you are reading only two sentences here so and if there is like uh, when you are reading the last sentence be careful if this is okay something pronoun or if they are using some kind of determiner like our uh, this one conjunctions like however and and all so that means what that idea is not complete you have to get back to one more uh, sentence there but here it is plainly what they have given independent sentence let us only read this and understand what exactly happening but when you are doing this don't try to what is that assume anything okay see when i am giving the instruction kindly follow this so i repeatedly say this why because if you follow this you can get all the questions correctly theek hai so now if you see here we have the yoruba people of nigeria classify their towns into two ways what they may be discussing they are discussing that the, these people the yoruba people so they are classifying their towns into 
two ways. Okay. And the last sentence is trying to say what there is no typical Yorba uh, town. So, but so some features are common to most towns. So, what they are saying here, so there is no typical Yorba town municipalities, but some features. So some some things are common to these most towns. That means basically, if you see Yoruba towns are classified into two uh, this one, okay, and uh, there are some common features found. There is no specific or we don't have any typical feature, but some common features are common to these towns. So now tell me what is that particular thing we have. What should be the answers? Tell me, you people tell me whether they are talking about town facilities. Is it talking about town facilities? No, you need to find the current correct adding here. Yeah. Okay. I could see. Types of settlements. Okay. Yes. If you see uh, what they are saying, the type of settlements they are talking. Two. See, town is what settling. The people leaving. So they have two types of settlements. Okay. So therefore, what exactly? So very good, guys. So it is what types of settlements. Yes. You people can. What is that? Give five as your answer. Now, I would like to give you one more exciting thing. So now what you people do, now you read the remaining part. Remaining part you people read. Permanent towns with their own governments are called ALU. So whereas temporary settlements set up to set up work, this ABBA, although see that means what it is more of describing the settlements only, isn't it? So see, when we read the first sentence and last sentence only, we got the same particular thing here. Okay. So that is what. So therefore, for A, it is, I can take it as what? Five. Now. <clears throat> In the 19th century, now next one, we have here the first sentence we have. And where is the uh, second sentence? The markets was usually next to the local ruler's palace. Now, here they are talking about in 19th century, most towns were heavily fortified. And the foundations of these walls are sometimes visible. That means they are talking about the 19th century towns. Okay. And now they are talking, say, they were heavily fortified and uh, the, those walls are still visible, it seems. Okay. And then, so the, uh, the last thing what it is given here, the market was usually next to the local ruler's palace. That means at that time, point of time in 19th century so if you see local rulers palace uh, so it i mean the markets were just next to the local ruler palace so what should be the answer here what is it talking about first of all it is talking about 19th century town okay and it is describing how heavily fortified and the foundations are still visible and also it is trying to say near the palaces only the markets were there okay so now tell me what it has to be what should be the answer sixth okay Okay, I have eight also as an answer, city defenses. Okay, six, eight, seven also is there. Okay, I want to say here one thing. What they were saying, 19th century's uh, towns, they described. Okay, 
and also they they said that near the uh, this one what is that uh, it was completely fortified and also foundations are visible and we knew that so near the palaces we had market more this is talking about that past so in 19th century how it was okay how the town was okay let me take all the answers that you people have given and let me uh, check it out okay so some had given seven domestic arrangements see in domestic arrangement domestic means what house here okay so domestic is house whether they are talking about house arrangements here town arrangements they are talking about town arrangements so we won't take it as this and eight city defenses are they saying oh i got to know why you people pick city defenses because we have heavily fortified no guys it was they are only describing that structure they said it is heavily fortified but nowhere it said that that was that one thing which protected the city so or they are not talking anything about the defenses here so therefore what it goes out here okay even this also goes out so if you take architectural own styles are they describing any houses here no right they are describing 19th centuries so uh, this one town how it was so that means 19th century is a past past means historical historical foundations how the things were that time so therefore what we are going to take six we are going to freeze six as our answer see when you are picking up properly pick what is the main idea they are talking about so 19th century which is an history now so and they are talking there about the foundations that means so the fortifications so buildings and everything they are talking about so mostly which is matching here our sixth one is matching even the residence of rulers also it is not matching but why because that is not the agenda they have only spoken about the residence of rulers i mean the markets were next to that they did not describe the residence of the rulers here so i guess yes you got to know that the residence of rulers whether their main agenda is talking about residence of rulers or they were one talking entirely about the town so it is about the town that is the reason we are not picking our ninth as well okay so your sixth is the answer now if you want you people see uh, the next collection tolls to enter and exit through the walls was a major source of revenue for old town rulers as were market fees the markets were generally located centrally and this one while in the large towns there were permanent stands made of corrugated iron or concrete so this this is don't you think it is more of describing the historical foundations of that time isn't it it is mostly describing that particular thing here okay now getting it everyone how you people need to find so these things it is as simple as this now don't you think if you read the mid of the paragraph it will be confusing also and you will be wasting the time also so what we have so the next sentence is this see full stop to full stop it can be half sentence it can be one and a half uh, line also and the second so here we have second sentence is here so the palaces were very often very large in 1930s the area of oyo's palace covered this 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 consisted a series of country yards surrounded by private and public room so they are talking describing what so palaces here no we should not yeah when you get confused okay at that time so at that time you may have to read okay but i say if you read more you will get confused i always recommend go by first sentence and last sentence that's it yes 
it is uh, why did i tell you to read miss for your confirmation otherwise according to the rule that i train i always recommend you people to just go for first sentence last sentence because we need to get exactly the correct answers and also we need to save time okay so here let us try to see what they are given the palaces were often very large okay oh the only till here sorry i read hmm. the palaces were very large that means yeah per, they would be describing palaces here often the rulers built two story houses for themselves using some of the palace grounds for government buildings that means they built two stories remaining the palace grounds were used for government building systems don't you think that they are talking about the uh, living places of rulers here isn't it they're talking about palaces palaces who will re live there so rulers so that that means you got the idea here so what it is is it nine yes Somebody had given me one. Dinesh, why one? Are they talking about town facilities or individually they are focusing on palaces? Individually they are focusing on palaces, na? And don't get confused, government buildings. No. Government building is not the main thing there. They are trying to describe, okay, palaces were like this. So rulers, what they were doing, they were building for themselves two stories. In the ground left over, they were building this government building. Government building is not the agenda. What is agenda here? Palaces of rulers. Okay. Therefore, ninth is the answer that you people have. Now, the next thing that so I hope, yes, the residence of rulers is correct answer. Ninth one. Now, the town is divided into different sections. Here they are talking about what? The town is two also. Why you will think to colonization? What do you mean by colonization? British having its, what is that, uh, colonies. That is colonization. Anywhere are they talking about that? Urban division. For which one you people are answering? Urban division. For the now what we are doing or the uh, previous one? Previous one, it is nine only. Okay. Now, I guess, uh, now you see, let us see for the D. The town is divided into different sections. Okay. Now, uh, where is the last sentence? Newer developments such as industrial or commercial areas or apartment housing for civil servants tends to be built on the edge of the town. What they are doing? So town division, they are talking about town divisions and also they are talking about the industrialization developments and classifications everything so what it can be yes so it is what urban divisions why industrialization has come into this one so that is how it is more than a facility they are dividing so don't get confused here town is divided Divided in the sense it is division, not the facilities there. Okay. So, therefore, urban divisions is the right one for this particular question. Okay. D, it is what? Three. Very good. Very good. Now, let us take E. Houses are rectangular and either have a country yard in the center or the rooms comes off a central corridor now they are describing the houses okay and lastly what we have we have younger well educated people may have well furnished houses while their older relatives live in mud walled buildings and sleep on mats on the floor 
So what is it talking about? The houses, isn't it? Okay. So that's what, even if it is too lengthy also, we are only approaching what? Only first sentence and last sentence. Let it be of any length. We are going to do this particular approach only. <coughs> what is that? Houses are rectangular and either have a country yard in the center of the rooms comes of a central corridor. They are describing how the houses are. And also they are trying to say uh, what. So uh, younger, well-educated people will have furnished house, while the older, this one, will have this, this, this. OK. So now, tell me. I'll just clear this. Hmm. Now tell me, what should be the answer? Whether it is four, yeah, seven. Four. Why? They are describing the style of the houses. They are not saying domestic arrangements means what? So, okay, in one house, how people will be arranged? They are talking about the home styles, no? So in a storied, so concreted walls. So you can see here. You can see, may have well furnished house while live in a mud walled buildings and they sleep on the walls. Either and also see, they're mostly talking about the description of structure of the houses, isn't it? They're talking here about the structure of the houses. So it is what structure in the sense, what architectural home styles, what it has to be architectural. Home styles, it is not domestic arrangement. Okay. So, therefore, fourth one is our answer. Next, let me clear this. Now, next one, you people tell me. The builder or the more senior man gets a room either near the entrance or in the sea. Now, you can see here. The builder or the more you get the, this one next to the balcony and any empty room are used as what so a storage let out if they face the street used as shops don't you think this is an individual arrangement in the house here now it is what domestic arrangement now what it is it is now domestic arrangements got it See, look at the way it is so minutely different. Okay, it is not like what is that? Too different, very minutely. People, if you don't be very what is that cautious, you may end up mistaking the things there. Okay, so the next thing that we have here is what amenities vary. Okay, amenities vary. Access to water, amenities means facilities. Access to water and electricity are the key political issues. That means they are talking about facilities of the town. So therefore, what it has to be? It has to be where they are talking about facilities. It's town facilities. Yes, the first one. Why government buildings, Anurag? Why it is government? They are talking about amenities, the political issues. I mean, the electricity and water is a political issue. That means they are having the facilities. They are talking about the basic needs and facilities. So which is the one that is talking about that? Town facilities. First one, it is not go government buildings. OK, government buildings means what? Something specific you are talking about government buildings. No, it is not about that particular thing. Okay, got it, guys? Okay, so this is what our simple adding is. Okay, so now <coughs> you people have any doubt on these things? You need to, uh, what is that? Take up the things in the same very manner. Any doubts? Please follow this. Also, I would very good, Namni. Navinta, very good. Ma'am, can we practice one lengthy passage together tomorrow? Uh, see, uh, Femina, uh, we are doing one by one 
we are concentrating completely on every section so i guess uh, like uh, we have one protocol and system of practicing so we'll be doing that only a uh, webinar okay uh, right welcome tyson okay so any doubts you guys have thank you money thank you okay then so we'll see you soon in the next week class all the best but practice until and unless you don't practice all these methods you will forget so welcome welcome yash welcome femina right okay guys we'll see you any other doubts you can ask me otherwise we'll see you in the next class welcome guys